morning everyone. I am going to give a brief introduction to Scilab. The outline of the talk is as follows. A brief introduction to Scilab. We are going to do some uh, calculations, going to solve some, uh, uh, some problems and then I will point out some of the features, some of the facilities that are available on the web and uh, some guidelines on installation and so on. What is Scilab? By the way, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. So I know that uh, there are some questions to answer. Okay, let me ask uh, a question. You don't have to answer some of my questions immediately. Um, how many of you know Scilab? How many of you know MATLAB? Scilab is a software for numerical computations. It provides extremely reliable results. A large number of uh, libraries are there. There are some, so there is a question from Indore. Okay, let's see what it is. Yeah, go ahead. It is, uh, it is not sky lab, it is sci, like science. Sci lab. Oh, I am very sorry for that, sir. Yeah, no problem. Good. I am glad to see uh, people at indoor. Yeah. So, at this time, I would like to show a web page. You can see this Scilab, first Scilab users conference. Let me just make my, let me make my mouse slightly larger so you can actually see that. But, all right, see this first Scilab users conference and there were uh, lots of talks here and you can see that, um, in fact, I gave the keynote address, I talked about National Mission on Education through ICT, but uh, I want you to refer to, I want you to see this talk, use of Scilab for space mission analysis. This was uh, presented by uh, Dr. Martin of CNES, which is equivalent of our ISRO. Okay. Now, if you click here, you can see that he actually talks about what is Scilab. Okay, of course, I can make it slightly bigger. So, he says that it has been used successively, successfully for several years in their space agency. Now, if you just go up here, just come over on the left hand side of the same page. Uh, if you see the second line, you see presentations and the PDF files given are given here. PDF files used by these presenters are given here. Okay. Use of Scilab. So, if you click this, you will get the PDF file that he had used, the slides that he had used. The point that I want to make is this uh, person, Dr. Martin, made a summary of in what all ways Scilab is used in the space mission. Uh, CNES equivalent of our ISRO. His conclusion is that Scilab is used for almost every activity. Obviously, uh, a very successful uh, space agency that France has uh, cannot depend on some software package that is not reliable. I would like to point out that Scilab uses extremely reliable mathematical routines. Another important thing is it's a, it uses a high level language. It has a built in high level language, can express your ideas in a few lines. For example, if you would take 100 lines to write a program in assembly language, maybe you will need only 10 lines to write it in C and you can express the same thing in one tenth of that, namely one line in Scilab. Okay? So that's why I say that Scilab is to C is about 1 is to 10. And you can also write additional functions using interpreted language. So there are two types of routines available. One is using C or Fortran 
for high speed calculations. These are available as built in libraries. So, you can just pass your arguments and get the results. It also has a high level language using for loops, while loops, break and so on and so forth. You can express, you can write functions. So, it is possible for you to use the interpreted language to write your own program using Scilab. So, you can use either the built in libraries written in C or Fortran or the functions created using the high level language available in Scilab. So, this high level language is what I call as the interpreted language. Now, Scilab is created for mathematicians. Matrices and vectors can be created easily. No typing, do not have to define storage, etc. So, let me just go to a Scilab environment. I have just opened it. Uh, at present, I am using a Mac OS X operating system. Scilab runs also on Linux machines and also on Windows. Okay. So, I said that it is very easy to create matrices. Let us create a 3 by 3 matrix A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. All right. So, it has created the matrix. Not only that, it has what I did was I typed this and entered a carriage uh, return here and it echoes the results. For example, if I just say what is A, it will come and say that A is a 3 by 3 matrix. So, there is no need to type. I do not have to create storage allocation. You can also carry out matrix vector products just like the mathematicians do. For example, when somebody is explaining a matrix vector multiplication. For example, somebody is talking about a linear system, let us say A x equals B. So, the mathematician will just write A times x equals B. He is not going to say for i equals 1 comma 3 and then j equals 1 comma 3 and so on and so forth. He will not be expanding it. He will just write it as A x equals B. For example, let us write, uh, let us create a vector called um, 1. So, you can also go to the next row by entering semicolon. Okay. In the previous example, what I did here was I just did a carriage return, it went to the next row. Only thing is this results in 3 lines being used. Instead, I can just say 1 semicolon, 2 semicolon, 3. So, if I do that, it says x is a vector of size 1, 2, 3. Of course, I could have written like I had done before 1, 2, 3. I could have done that way also. Both give the same result. All right, I have two things uh, 3 by 3 matrix A and a vector of dimension 3. So, if I want to multiply these two matrices, the mathematician would just say A times x. I do the same thing. It has computed, it has given the result. right? So, I did not say for loop, I did not say do loop, I just said multiply, it multiplied. So, this was um, uh, this was uh, this environment, the Scilab environment belongs to uh, MATLAB family. This environment was originally created by Professor Clee Moller, who was a computer science professor at the uh, New Mexico State University, and he was teaching mathematics, he was teaching numerical analysis, he had to deal with matrices. He found that he was spending a lot of time when they went to coding, they had to do lots of things, keeping track of uh, functions, for loops, do loops, dimensioning typing and things like that. So, he said that in a class the mathematicians write as if these were just 
you know scalars a times x finding the eigenvalues finding the determinants all just done by just one command why can't I generate a language that will allow me to do the same thing. So, he came up with this highly successful environment he had worked on uh, MATLAB and that MATLAB the one initially created by Professor Cleve Moller was created with government grants American government grants. So, it was available as open source. So, a lot of companies used that open source MATLAB and built upon. So, the commercial version of MATLAB uses that old open source version of MATLAB. In a similar way Scilab also uses the same old version of MATLAB. Of course, all of these packages have improved enormously. Many of them have rewritten the whole thing in um, C, Fortran and things like that. But nevertheless, the basic ideas for which the original MATLAB was created by Professor Cleve Moller are still maintained in all these platforms. That is the reason why you would see that Scilab is about 95 percent compatible with MATLAB because they all come from the same source. Of course, Professor Cleve Moller worked on LINPAC and ICEPAC projects. These later on resulted in LAWPAC. And these are the ones that are used for computing eigenvalues and linear, linear equations in a numerically stable way. And these are used in all these platforms. That is the reason why I said that these are highly reliable numerical computing platforms. See these are meant for computations and not only that these are also created in such a way that the computations can be done extremely fast without you are having to write lots of lines of code. That is the reason why I said that in C if you need 10 lines you need only one line in Scilab. So, these are the features that I uh, talked about earlier. The important thing to realize is Scilab is free. Scilab has a lot of mathematical libraries, special functions, polynomials, matrix condition number, matrix functions, decomposition and factorization, signal processing. I told you that Scilab has uh, an inbuilt language. I also called it as the interpreted language. It is like C. It has lots of control flows. It has procedures. Okay. What I will do is I will uh, start describing the usage of Scilab. The way I have written my code is that the way I have written the code is that my entries will be in black and the answers given by Scilab will be in blue. Okay. So, what I will do is initially I will compute all of this some of this at least I will hopefully convince you that the answers given here will be given here also. For example, 4 plus 6 plus 12 get a carriage return. So, the answer is 22. So, this is used for computation. All right, can somebody tell me? So, here I typed A equals 4, B equals 6, C equals 12. Okay, let me do the same thing A equals 4, B equals 6, C equals 12, exactly like I have written. And it echoes A equals 4, C equals 12. Is this expected? How come B is not echoed? Does anyone have an answer? Okay, so you think about it. Let's continue with this. Anybody has an answer? Yeah, yeah. Let's go to Nirma. Yes, sir, B is equal to six. Semicolon is given. Okay, thank you. So in answer, 
B is not uh, shown. Okay, great. That answer is correct. So the answer is B has a semicolon. So that is why it is not a code. So it is a very important and useful thing in Scilab, just like in MATLAB. If you don't want to display any intermediate result, just put a semicolon. It is extremely useful. Of course, here it doesn't matter. It is extremely useful in a for loop where you may compute lots of things. You don't want it to echo the results, intermediate results every time, right? So for example, suppose you have a 10 by 10 matrix inside a for loop and you are computing every element inside a for loop. In one loop, just go through one once. So next time you will compute the second one and so on. Now, if you don't put the same problem, what will happen is it will display the whole matrix for every loop. Supposing you do 1000 times, then it will come 1000 times. Okay. All right. So I hope that you can just follow this. Now I just say A plus B plus C says the answer is 22. Okay. I do some more of these. A is 4, B is 6, C is 12. I put a semicolon. It doesn't echo anything. Then I say D equals A plus B plus C and D is 22. Okay. So here I said 4 plus 6 plus 12. Okay. I didn't say where the answer should go. Scilab automatically puts it in a variable called ANS. Okay. If I say A equals 4, it says variable A is created and A equals 4. I didn't say where it is going. It puts it in default variable called ANS. Same thing here. I just compute. The answer goes to ANS. Here I created ABC. Then I say D equals A plus B plus C and D is 22. Okay. D is A plus B plus C. Semicolon. It does not echo. Then I say D and it says D is 22. Okay. Then there are format statements. Um, in Scilab, built-in functions, built-in numbers are represented by percent sign. For example, pi percent pi is denoted as percent pi. If I get a carriage return, it will say 3.1415927. So here I have done a very simple calculation. I define x to be square root of 2 by 2, 1 by root 2 and then y is sign inverse of x. So A, A stands for arc. So A sin x is already defined in Scilab and it gives the result in, grade, uh, in radians. It is given in radians. So I multiply by um, 180 degrees divided by pi to get 45 degrees. So let us do this calculation. x is equal to square root of 2 by 2 which is 0 0.707 and then y is a sin a stands for arc right so let me do that so it has given the same thing then i say that y underscore degree equals y multiplied by 180 degrees divided by percent pi it's 45 degrees yeah let's take the uh, question Okay, let us uh, take the question from Amruta. Hello sir, are you able to hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, my question is, you have specified that uh, C code can be um, interfaced with Scilab. Um, yes. Will you be able to give more light on that or some material regarding that? One. And the second thing is, we have so many toolboxes related to Scilab and we could download that from the uh, web, but we are not able to get any help, uh, mate helping material regarding that toolbox. If we are able to get that toolbox or some uh, books regarding that, it will be very useful to us. And uh, the third one is like, uh, is GUI so friendly as MATLAB and Scilab? So there, there are three questions I'm, uh, I wanted to ask you. Thank you. Okay. So good. There are three questions from, uh, from uh, Amruta. Uh, the first one is um, how to interface with C. I can, uh, we can make this available. What I will do is, the best thing is to uh, first do a Google search. So let's say Scilab C interface. 
okay. So, you get this interfacing C or photon programs, okay. Here it is. So, what I would do is the very first thing that I would do is so this is one of the answers. So, in 6.2.1, they have given up this example also building an interface program, okay. So, uh, so there is uh, some help available on the web. So, there is some help available on the web, um, but uh, better help is required. Uh, we do not mind actually coming to uh, any of the places and conducting a Scilab workshop if required. That is the first question. We are also in the process of establishing um, Moodle based uh, interaction uh, forums through which we can start interacting. We will inform all of you the moment this is done. This is the uh, second answer to the first question. The second question that came from Amruta is um, toolboxes. Um, how good are these toolboxes? Uh, um, the, and the third question is, so maybe I did not uh, understand the second question exactly. So, it has to do with the toolboxes. The third question is uh, the GUI. Is the GUI as good in Scilab? So, uh, there is a trade off between uh, commercial software packages and uh, uh, free software packages. Uh, in uh, commercial software packages, uh, it is very expensive. But then because they employ a lot of people, they can make the you know GUI documentation and so on a lot better. The only problem is if you use commercial software packages, once they once our students go to the industry, they just cannot use them. So, what is the point in having um, so what is the point having something lot better correct? What is the point in you know using something that is thousand times more expensive even if it is extraordinary if you cannot use it okay. Uh, so, there is a question from uh, Puna. So, we can uh, answer that also okay. The question from COEP is um, are there variables uh, typing called float double and so on in Scilab everything is double okay. Okay, that was a question from COEP Pune. Now, I want to do this example. Suppose I want to create a, a vector. Let us say that I want to create a vector called x equals 1 through 5. What will it create? All right, it says that it breaks it into. So, let me see if I can make it bigger, what will happen? Okay, let me just do essentially it says that okay. So now it comes in the same column. X equals 1 is to 3, it says 1, 2, 3. So let me just do 4, it says 1, 2, 3, 4. When I say 5, it cannot put it in the same row, it puts it in the second row. Uh, but the values are all there, it is just the display is different. Now I can say x is equal to 1 through 4 multiplied by percent pi. So, what it will do is it will say 1 times pi, 2 times pi, 3 times pi, 4 times pi because 1 is to 4 is a vector. So, as I mentioned you can multiply a vector by a scalar just like mathematicians do. So, when I hit a carriage return it will say pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. So, you can do that. You can also do it like this x equals percent pi, 2 times percent pi, 3 times percent pi, 4 times percent pi. Take it off of course, you know write the whole thing manually, 
it gives the same answer ok. You can also use a command called lin space for example, here I am dividing it to into uh, the interval 0 to pi into 11 intervals starting from 0, 0 0.1 pi, 0 0.2 pi all the way up to pi or I can say 0 to 1 in increments of 0 0.1 see I did not mention this here. So, for example, if I say x equals 1 is to 4 it will do this, but if I say x equals 1 is to 2 is to 4 what will it give ok. So, it will give 1 and then the increment yeah there is uh, Amruta Coimbatore yeah what will happen? Uh, sir uh, it is not regard related to the question, but it was related to the manual that we spoke earlier sir. Uh, actually we were downloading the toolbox related to image processing yeah. uh, and we are working in digital image processing and we have a group formed over here and we were actually trying for the Scilab uh, toolbox equivalent and we were able to get the toolbox for that, but we did not have a supporting material something similar to the manual where uh, which specifies what sort of command has to be used for which purpose. So, since that documentation is not clear, we were not able to uh, proceed ahead at using Scilab. You are still uh, stuck with MATLAB. <laughs> okay. All right. So, the I um, will just repeat this question shortly from Amruta. All right. So, the answer here is um, yes, one more question from Amruta. Yeah, okay. Will you be able to give us some demo session or workshops regarding this Scilab, especially for the image processing? Uh, we will see if it can be done. So, the uh, you know, I will repeat that uh, uh, question later shortly. I they just uh, reminded me of the second question. All right, let us come back to 1 is to 2 is to 4. This 2, like you would do in programming languages, is the increment number. So, it will do 1, 3, the next one will be 5, but then we are writing the limit up to 4 only. So, it, it shows up to 3 only. So, for example, if I do 5, it will say 1 is to 3 is to 5 and so on. Okay. So, here what I am saying is 0 in increments of 0 0.1 up to 1. So, there are 11 points multiplied by pi. So, the uh, now I can uh, just repeat the question that uh, Amruta asked. Um, manuals are not available for toolboxes they had a question about signal processing toolbox, image processing toolbox, whether some workshop can be organized. So, uh, let us see whether we can do that. We will certainly try to um, uh, provide all the help. In fact, we want to take up the use of Scilab in a big way in the country. So, in fact, your input and your participation is extremely important uh, required to make that happen. Okay, vector operation. So, just like I created this uh, vector, I can find sign of this vector. For example, I can say x equals, let me just do 0 increments of 0.1 to 1 multiplied by percent pi. Note that I have to put a semicolon so that it does not echo, echo the result. Then I say y equals sin of x put a semicolon so that it does not echo the result. Then I say plot 2D x comma y it is computed. So, let me just do this it is not very smooth because there are not many points right. So, let us just do this for not 1 pi let us do this for ok. I can recall the previous commands by ok not 1 pi let me do this for 3 pi ok sin x plot 2 d. So, you can see that now I have done it for um, up to 3 pi. So, plotting is extremely easy ok and then of course, uh, here what I have done is I have taken sign of this vector and then if I want to extract any component I just have to say uh, 5. For example, uh, you have to remember unlike C the indexing starts from 1. So, y 1, 
y2, y3, y4, y5. So it comes here. All right. Now let me see whether I can do this. So I have created these two vectors. A is 1 through 5. B is 1 is to 2 is to 9. So it goes up to 9. Now I want to do a small calculation. Let me just repeat that. B equals 1 is to 2 is to 9. Okay. So the answer is 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Now what I want to ask is, in fact I have the question here. I want to ask you this question, what will happen to B of 1 is to 2 is to 5? What will be the answer? B is 1 is to 2 is to 9, it has given me this vector. Now I am asking this question, B of 1 is to 2 is to 5, what will be the answer? Can anybody guess the answer? Okay. So let us, uh, uh, we have not got the answer, let us first find what 1 is to 2 is to 5 does. 1 is to 2 is to 5 will be? So, ah, Periyar University in uh, Periyar Mariamma University, yeah, please go ahead. Hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. You are from Periyar Mariamma College. So, we are uh, the, we form a good team in a neural network. So, we are working on that uh, in our math lab. Can we, uh, can we do the same work on the uh, silence, sir? Uh, same toolbox, can we uh, use the same toolbox, uh, uh, the same commands or something in the you know, the silence? Okay, um, the answer is that uh, yes, it is possible. Um, I, uh, of course, I do not know about all the toolboxes and so on. One has to, we need to discuss. We will set up the website, we will inform you, then we can start discussing through that. Okay. So I do not have a specific answer to this question at this point. All right, thanks. So the, the question I had was, what is 1 is to 2 is to 5? In fact, I wanted B of 1 is to 2 is to 5. The answer is not given in this uh, question. So let us do this. So if I do 1 is to 2 is to 5, it gives 1, 3, 5. So you can say, if I say B of 1 is to 2 is to 5, so what will it give? Let us see whether this works. It will give the first element of B and then the third element of B. What is the third element? It is 5. What is the fifth element of B? It is 9. So it is 159. So it is possible. So what we have done is just recall this what we did. I said B is this, B1 is to 2 is to 5, it just extracts the way that we want. Uh, just imagine doing this in C. How many lines of code you would have written to do this? It would have taken a lot of lines. Okay, so that's what it does. I have created a, uh, a variable called d, which is b is one is to two is to five, and then one zero one. It attaches these. Okay, before I go on, I see that uh, there is a big difference in the type of audience. There are some people who have no clue of what Scilab is about, and you know, in fact, this talk is meant for people, even for people who do not use Scilab. There are also people who have been using Scilab who are stuck in neural network uh, processing or neural networks or image processing. So you have advanced questions and in fact those questions, um, you know, I may not be in a position to answer them because I may not be familiar with some of those toolboxes that you might have downloaded. So all that I can say is that we should be in a position to help you all. What we should do is we can have one more session later on in this uh, during this program itself where we can meet once more and see if we can address some specific questions. Here in this talk what I would like to do is 
I would like to stay with the talk that I am giving, right? And I have some questions so that you can think and participate, you would interact with me on the questions that I pose. Your advanced questions can be answered some other time. So, if you maybe I should have uh, uh, mentioned this right in the beginning, all right. So, at least now I can say that. Is that okay? Okay. Um, all right. I said that Scilab has a built in language, it has functions, it has for loops, do loops, and so on. So, for all of these, you need a comparison operator equal to, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, and so on. So, let us see some usage of this. For example, I create this a equals 1 through 9, b is 9 minus a. So, this is going to create a a vector of 1 through 9 and then b also will be a vector of 9 elements, only thing is 9 minus a. So, a is created 1 through 9, b is 9 minus a, 9 minus 1 is 8, 9 minus 2 is 7, 9 minus 7 is 2, 9 minus 9 is 0. So, I have created these two. Now, what I want to do is, I want to ask this question. In fact, let us see whether you can do this. A equals, let me just say 1 through 4, B is 4 minus A. Now, I want to ask this question, is A equal equal B? What will be the answer? Okay, there is a question from Amrita Puri. Now, my question is, I do not want you to ask another question as I mentioned earlier. Now, please do not connect me. Okay, the question I have is, I have a specific question. If you have a question, we will answer it later. The question is because otherwise we will not get anywhere. You have hundreds of questions from people who have used Scylla for something or other, right? There are also lots of people who do not even know Scilab. So, as I mentioned earlier, this is a general purpose talk. Does anyone have an answer to this question? What is A equals B? Yeah, VNIT Nagpur has an answer. Yeah, go ahead. The answer is A equals B. Sorry, this is not equal. See, for example, here I said, so the answer is A equals B. Okay. Here I am saying, see you have to understand the operator, here A equals 1 is to 4, here I am saying equal equal, that means I am comparing the two things. So, Velour, Velour Institute of Technology, Tamil Nadu, let us go there, they say that it is uh, false. Okay. Here I am asking the question is A equal to B, that is a question mark. The moment I say equal equal, I am questioning. Yeah. Bellur, yeah, go ahead, please answer. No, the answer is it is false. That is not the, that is not completely correct. If I type, if I give the carriage return now, what will Scilab give? Okay, let us see if anybody else has the answer. Uh, let us see somebody new. Anna University has given the answer, the Chennai, last one. Yeah, the answer they have given is 0, 0, 0, 0. So, that is the correct answer because it is going to compare these two is 1 is to 3, 1 equal to 3, it will say, so it is not equal. 2 is equal to 2, it will say not equal. 3 equals 1, not equal. 4 equals 0, not equal. The only thing is, it is not going to give 0, 0, 0, 0. It is going to give false, 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 false. So, MATLAB may give it as 0, 0, 0, 0, but Scilab will give it this way. Let us see the carriage return. Hey. This, yeah, I made a mistake. In fact, somebody had answered that. I think Amrita Puri has answered it correctly and also Government Engineering College, Trisur also answered it correct. So, the answer from Anna University is not okay. You had given all of them 0. You have probably also made the same mistake that I made. Notice that this 2 is equal to this 2. So, it is the answer is false, true, false, false. And of course, I can ask questions like is A so, let us uh, recall what A is, what B is, I can ask e is A greater than B. So, it will be false here, what will happen here? This 2 is not greater than 
B not greater than 2, so this will be also a false, 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 true, true. Okay. All right. So this is extremely useful. Okay. This is extremely useful in applications such as signal processing, image processing. You want to detect an edge and you want to locate in a big matrix entries that are 1 for example. So you can just say find all those entries and tell me where they are. As opposed to writing a for loop, this can be done using matrices. Okay. What I will do is I will uh, give that example and th then maybe I will stop here. I want to go to this, let us go to, I mean of course you can do lots of these things. Let us do a transpose. So for example, here I have created C equals 1 semicolon, 2 semicolon, 3. So it creates a column vector. If I say 1 is to 3, 1, 2, 3 and then B is A transpose, then transpose is obtained by colon, then you get this, uh, sorry, uh, a single quote, you get 1, 2, 3 and then you can extract uh, sub matrices. Okay. So here for example, I am saying A is a 3 by 3 matrix and the second column of A is taken out and put it in B, right. So for example, let us uh, look at this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 0. I have created this, then I say B is equal to a of, supposing I want to extract only the second row, I will say second row, all columns, all columns are done by this colon, it will give me 4, 5, 6. If on the other hand, I say A equals, B equals A of second row, okay, except that I do not want the columns come in the same manner. Suppose I want to say let it start from third column decrements of minus decrements of 1 all the way up to 1. Just think about it. The second row but in the column I am saying start with the third which means 6 should come first and then the second index is 2, 3, 2, 1 it will be 6, 5, 4. See that 654. Of course, I can do some more operations. A is this, B, let me just say B is 2 is to 3, which means take the second and third. So it is 654 and then 0, 8, 7. Of course, I can do if I want only 1 and third, so I can say. 1 is to 2 is to 3 which means skip the second one. So now I got 3 to 1, 0, 8, 7 and so on. So just imagine this line gives you, I mean a really fancy calculation doing this in C would have taken lots of lines. Okay, this is uh, uh, next one is uh, an extremely important one uh, that Scilab is optimized for vector calculations. So I want to illustrate this using this. So let us create a matrix A equals uh, once of, let me first show you this uh, command called once. Once of phi comma 1 will give me phi by 1 and then it will have all ones. Similarly, A equals once of 2 comma 3 will give me 2 by 3 matrix. All right. So what I will do is I will create this A equals 1 of, let me do this 50,000 comma 1. So what should I do now? Can I put carriage return? If I put a carriage return, it would try to echo all the 50,000 values, do not want to do this. So I put a semicolon. So it has created this vector called A. Now what I want to do is I want to add A and A and put it in B. So I will do it as follows. 
for i equals 1 is to 3 b equals a of i b of i equals let me put this a of i plus a of i and then remember to put this semicolon only thing is i said i equals going from 1 to 3 i have to say 50000 b equals this let me do this uh, okay let's see let's see whether this will work okay it didn't like it okay the usage is okay let's do it for smaller one once of 5 comma 1 b equals for i equals 1 through 5 b of i equals a of i plus a of i end ok. So, say so it is actually computing every time. So, that is ok. Uh, the mistake was I think because B was typed as something else it is expecting some other thing. So, I did not like this ok. So, what we will do is uh, we will do the following. What? Okay. So, this is fine. So, we will do the following clear B. So, A is once of 50,000 comma 1 and then B is this ok. Ok, it is doing the computation alright, it has done the computation. So, what I will do is uh, invoke this function called timer ok, I do the calculation once again timer. So, it says now it took 0 0.4565 just remember this number. Now, what I will do is C equals A plus A ok. So, here I did the same thing except here I went through a loop here I did matrix calculation. So, let us do this once again timer C is this timer you can see that here it took 0.45 when I went through the loop when I did this a plus a here I am no longer using the loop it uses only 0.142 and we can of course ask is c equal equal b ok. If I do that what will happen now c is a vector of size 50,000 b is also a vector of size 50,000 it will compare all of them and it will say that. So, what I will do is let me just do a max of this let us see what happens function not defined ok let me see ok size of b is 50,000 by 1 size of A C is 50,000 by 1. So, um, help let me just do norm ok there is a norm let us see whether this works norm of ok norm of B equal equal C. not defined ok. So, let us do it this way um, comparison equals b equal equal c if I went through this it just keeps saying true ok then max of 
okay. Um, so, the point is that this is a uh, binary vector and um, I do not know whether sum will work, let me just see. Okay. So, sum worked here, sum of comparison and it gives 50,000. So, we compared B and C and B and C are identical and it gave one for each of them and then we added all of them we got 50,000. So, this is of course, an indirect way to check that. So, what I want you to do is to the extent possible use matrix calculation, do not use for loop. Yeah. All right. Time is over. So, as a result what I will do is uh, I will stop here. I hope I was able to give some flavor of um, scilab. Um, uh, you know there were uh, lots of questions. In fact, there were questions from I could address only about um, six or seven institutions. Um, one of the reasons is that one of the reasons why I did not want to answer many of your questions is that you had questions, lots of questions not directly relevant to my talk and I thought that um, we could have a separate session to answer some of these high level questions. At that time I will not answer, um, I will not give a talk, but maybe we can just uh, field questions. So, with that I would like to um, you know end, just give me one minute. I will just see if uh, we have. So, I had something on uh, differential equations. If there is an interest, I can give a talk later. So, I will just quickly go through this. And then, of course, plots are very nice. One can create nice plots in uh, Scilab. I will upload this uh, file, you can look at it. Okay. So, to conclude, Scilab is ideal for educational institutions, including schools. It is built on a sound numerical platform, it is free, it is also suitable for industrial applications. There is of course a standard trade off between free and commercial applications. So, I want to thank you for listening to me. If required, we can meet again for another session on Scilab. Thank you. <laughs>